difference does it make what Ted and Eden think? I know what I know, and it's more than I've told them. Daddy has never lied to us, Mason. If he thinks that you're guilty... All I'm asking is that you give me the benefit of the doubt. There are many times when you've lied to me, Mason. Never about anything important. Maybe not important to you, but important to me. So that's your answer, then. What about you, Ted? It doesn't matter what Ted thinks. Ted's opinion matters to me. I don't know what my opinion is. Hey, look, it doesn't matter yelling at each other. It's not going to do any good. I'll get it. Yes, hello? Yeah, this is he. Mr. Capwell, I've just been into Peter Flint's room, and I'm afraid he's gone. Gone? What do you mean he's gone? Gone where? Uh, I don't know. He's not in his room, and uh, he doesn't seem to be any place in the clinic. We've checked every place we could think of. I don't know how he got out without someone seeing him. I mean, he's too weak to walk. You were supposed to watch him. You gave me a word. We did. Two people got in here tonight without authorization, and we think they had something to do with this. Who were they? Can you describe them? I understand the man was in his late 40s, uh, wavy hair. I didn't see him. One of the nurses did. The woman was dark-haired, rather exotic-looking. Augusta and Lionel. All right, I, I know who they are, but I, I, uh, I don't understand what they could have had to do, had to do uh, with it. I, I, I don't understand how it happened. Uh, someone saw an ambulance drive away out front. We assume Peter Flint was inside. Well, of all the incompetent... Why couldn't you have been more careful? Mr. Capwell, we did our best. This is a clinic after all, not a jail. What is it, Mason? What happened? Mason! 